OK, we're going to have a look at coding this random number kind of guessing game in Scratch. Not that we're trying to teach Scratch here, but sometimes it's quite a good language to just have a play with to make sure you've got the logic right and you can understand the, the flow and the algorithm. So we'll, we're will we using it, we're not trying to teach you Scratch here. So we're going to have to uh, start our program probably when the green flag's clicked. If you remember, we said we'd start by generating a random number, but I'm going to have to store that somewhere. So I'm just going to make myself a new variable. Uh, rand number uh, and I'm going to set the random number to um, a random number so our variable random number is now a random number between 1 and 10 if you look at our flow of code <coughs> we said the next thing we're going to do was get the user to guess it so we could um, get the sprite to say something however we're going to ask a question remember in Scratch there's an operator block no it's not it's a sensing block which gets to ask a question and our question is going to be what number am I thinking of question mark so what number let's see if I can get my spelling right what number am I thinking of and it waits it waits until the user puts something in and that will come back in the variable answer. So we now enter the block where we need to think about all the possible um, things that the user could put in. So what we need is one of our control blocks now and we're going to have some form of if statement because we're going to be doing a test. And it was a bit of a weird one because there's three possibilities here. So one way to code this and uh, we'll, we'll very quickly have a look at this because we, we're probably thinking about how it's going to look in Python ultimately. Um, we're just going to do three individual tests. So this is our Boolean test. And what I'm interested in is to see if the random number that was first generated is the same as the answer that was put in. And obviously if it was then they've got the answer correct. And I can just say correct. Well done. Okay, we could then go on to look at a control block now and say if, let's look at our operators again, I've got a less than uh, operator here. So if what the user typed in, which was the answer, was less than our random number what we could do is just say obviously if it's less than the random number too small and finally oh, find my control block again if now actually if you notice it's quite similar to this block here so rather than do that if you're familiar with scratch we'll just duplicate the block um, actually that might not have been the easiest thing to do but it's actually a greater than operator probably would have been easier to create it from the beginning but uh, we've committed ourselves now so if the answer is bigger than the random number I've now got to say too big ok so there's the basics of our script um, let's just look at the thing we've Click the uh, so I've clicked the actual block. I shouldn't have done that. Should click the flag over there. What number am I thinking of? I'm going to just guess five, and said too big. So that's it. Our program seems to have run. Clearly, we've not put the loop in there uh, yet to to make that work. One thing about doing three if blocks like this is, even if this has been true and we've executed the code, we then go on to retest it against being less than and equal to. Well these two seem to be a bit ridiculous. Why are we testing if it's less than or greater than when we've already done a test up here saying it's equal to and if this was true then why do we bother testing these blocks? So that might not be the best way to code it. It makes a bit more sense really rather than use uh, an if block is probably to use a if then else block. So what we do with our if then else block is say well if they are equal say correct otherwise so only when this isn't true will we go and do these two tests and 
we can now improve it slightly like that. So now if it's true we'll say correct, otherwise we'll do two further tests, it's greater than and less than. And the same tr is true in here if you think about it. If this one evaluated to true, at the moment the program will go on and re-evaluate this one anyway. So again that's not particularly efficient and rather than do that it's probably better to use uh, if then else blocks in here and say if the answer is greater than random number sorry less than random number say it's too small and if you think about it now the only way that it will ever get down to this block here is if it wasn't equal to and it wasn't less than so it will only ever get down here if it was greater than so we don't really need to do the test we can just say that it was too big so there's our logic for us if it's equal to do this otherwise if it's less than do that and if that wasn't true just say it's too big let's just um, run that program again make sure all seems to work what number am I thinking of five too big obviously I don't know what the number was um, I did actually it was up here uh, if you're not sure why that's there it's because under data I've got the tick box here that just shows me I'm a variable let's run the program again it's chosen six so I'm purposely going to go too big this time I'm going to guess eight yeah it told me it was too big run the program again it's guess ten so I'm going to guess five too small brilliant let's run the program again it's actually thought of ten let's put in ten correct well done so the only bit we haven't done here is some form of loop so looking at our program again this block of code needs to repeat when the answer is wrong so if the answer is wrong we need to repeat this bit of code so looking at our control here we've got a repeat until block which looks like it could be quite useful so I'm going to put that around the outside and what am I repeating until well I just kind of said it didn't I the answer is wrong so we seem to be in a bit of a dilemma here how can I test whether the answer is wrong when we haven't asked the question for the loop to even start well we quite often hit this problem in programming so what we do is we, we pre-create the variable and we load it to make the loop run at least one time so I'm going to have to now come up with a variable or something I can test in here which will change in the loop when the answer is correct so I'm going to make a new variable and I'm going to call it right answer now within scratch we can't actually create what are called boolean variables um, I can only do numeric ones so it now becomes slightly more complicated but we can still uh, fairly easily achieve it what I've got to do with right answer now is I've got to decide what right answer means it's going to be able to take numeric values so I'm going to have to make um, make kind of a mental note that if the right answer is a zero that means it's wrong if right answer is a one that means it's right so it's um, worth trying to remember that what it might be worth doing is just adding a quick comment here uh, what my comments gonna say is right answer is zero when wrong and right answer has got the value 1 when correct so I've just made a, a kind of a note of that just so I don't lose track of what um, what it's going to do so initially the right answer is going to be set to 0 telling me the right answer is, is wrong so if you haven't got it which now means that when we do our loop here our loop makes more sense because what I can actually do is say when when do I want the uh, re loop to repeat here I want it to repeat until the right answer is right what's the right answer right is when it's one so I need to repeat until and in here I can just put a test and I can say until the right answer equals the value one okay so initially just going, going through the logic here again make sure we understand our algorithm the right answer is set to zero repeat so keep going round until the right answer equals one well, initially the right answer was zero so this 
uh, isn't true so it will go around and repeat the loop let's just test our logic here so what number am I thinking of we know the actual answer is 2 so let's initially uh, guess it wrong that was too big what number am I thinking of is come back that didn't really help that's with something just subtle with the logic of the program here he's asking the same question every time he asked the same question the first time and exactly the same question for repeated go so we might have to just think about how that visually appears on the screen so 4 was uh, too big let's put in 1 said it's too small what number am I thinking of and we'll put in the answer 2 correct well done and yep um, oh let's continue to go on we got the right answer why has that not worked 2 correct well done it's asking the question again well why did it not work well obviously come back to the code after we actually got the right answer we didn't reset the right answer variable here so nothing is changing the variable right answer within our code so it will keep going round because right answer zero obviously what we need to do here is after we've said correct and well done we now need to set right answer to the value of one because it is now the right answer we know because we're in here that they've got the right answer it'll come down to the end right answer will be one and it'll go back and try and repeat let's quickly test that three let's just go too big three let's just go too small three let's get the right answer and yeah we now drop out of the code we can see we stop running okay so the only other bit to do just kind of tidy it up a little bit if you remember it kept re-asking the same question what number I'm thinking of and, and not really prompt the user that they were needing to have another go so what I need to do is to probably um, say have another go have another go I need to think about where to put this um, if I put it uh, here at the bottom obviously it will only ever happen uh, right at the very end just before the program finishes so that's the wrong place if I pop it in in here it's at the end of the repeat loop so it will always say have another go even if it then comes back up here and they've got the right answer so that's in the wrong place uh, it probably makes sense to put it here which is they didn't get the right answer so they came into this else block here and they got the prompt too big or too small and it now says have another go so let's see if that works so what number am I thinking of I can see that it's actually guess 9 up there so I'm going to go 8 that's too small have another go what number am I thinking of I'll go high go for 10 too big have another go what number am I thinking of I'll go for 9 get the right answer correct well done and yep program end so there you go quick whiz in scratch to our number guessing game it gives you some idea of the flow and the logic as we now think about coding this in Python uh, you'll see some of the bits here tie exactly into what we're going to do in Python we're going to be creating a variable to store the random number in we're going to be prompting the user for some input uh, we're going to be reading the user and we're going to almost certainly be using some if and else constructions we're going to be testing for equality we're going to be testing whether it's greater than we're going to be giving some reporting and we're going to have to have some loop to keep going around uh, testing when the right answer is set. Okay, so hopefully that's useful for you. Um, and it's interesting to see how useful you find it in terms of now writing this in Python. Thanks.